that touch your life. This is 2020 with Barbara Walters, Diane Sawyer, Sam Donaldson, Connie Chung, Charles Gibson, and Hugh Downs. Tonight, the mystery is over. The bodies of John Kennedy, his wife, and her sister brought ashore tonight after being found today at the bottom of the sea. We were able to positively identify the three people that we were looking for. And as the crash investigation moves forward, two families prepare to bring their children home. Then, a Secret Service agent's treasured memory, the inside story of a little boy's touching farewell salute, today's dramatic developments, and the human story behind an American tragedy. And remember this? The company that promised to get your child a college scholarship. We guarantee to get you a minimum of $2,500 to $22,500. Since our hidden cameras caught them in the act, four former employees have come forward admitting they lied. Did you know any kids that were getting that much money? No, I didn't. Do you know of any that got scholarships? Not to my knowledge. The company's still out there doing business under a new name, charging parents hundreds of dollars for its services. Arnold Diaz with a fresh warning for parents facing college costs. Beware the high price of free money. Oh, it's been mind bending, high flying, thrill ride of the summer. Oh, in the name of the law! Disney Inspector Gadget, rated PG. You wouldn't believe what some people use to improve their hair's condition when all you really need is a blow dryer and heat-activated Thermosilk to make your hair healthier. Thermosilk, where there's heat, there's healthy hair. Remember life in the fast lane? I do First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now there's never been a better time to zero in on a Buick. With 0% APR GMAC financing or 1,000 cash back on Regal. Official car of the supercharged family. One oven fresh pizza? Domino's makes it fresh when you call. And delivers it hot in the Domino's heat wave. Domino's, made fresh, arrives fresh. Now get two oven fresh one topping mediums for just $10.99. The new Domino's, you gotta taste it to believe it. Got a busy bathroom? Don't forget to replace your Glade Spin Fresh refill every 30 days for maximum Glade freshness. Don't forget, don't worry. Refill freshness from Glade. ABC News in New York, Diane Sawyer and Sam Donaldson. Good evening, this is 2020 Wednesday. Tonight, three young lives, two grieving families, and an infinite amount of heartbreak. Five days after John Kennedy's plane crashed off of Martha's Vineyard, with his wife Carolyn, her sister Lauren on board, their bodies were found in the wreckage at the bottom of the sea. Late today, the families announced that services will be held this week, first in New York and then in Connecticut. So tonight, Sam, details are finally emerging for those who've been searching for answers. Diane, this has been a day of extraordinary developments in this story. The three bodies have been brought to the surface. They've been identified. They've been taken ashore for autopsy. And now we have late word of what may happen next. Our national security correspondent John McCrethy has details in Washington. John, what have you learned? Sam, we now know that uh, first thing tomorrow morning, about 9 a.m., the U.S. warship, a destroyer, the Briscoe, is going to weigh anchor from off Martha's Vineyard and head for blue water for a burial at sea. Uh, we know from family and from government sources that the Kennedys have decided that John will be buried at sea, and we also know that the Bassett family is now discussing the possibility of both their daughters being buried at sea at this point, but that is still unclear. That's not clear, so we don't know whether, in fact, if they decide to go ahead and do that, it would happen tomorrow morning? Uh, no, Sam. The ship is going to weigh anchor. Uh, the family will have to make their decision this evening. Government sources say 
uh, many people expect that the Bessettes will decide that both their daughters will be buried at sea along with John. That John, is the expectation at this point, Sam. John, what, what does burial at sea entail? We have all seen it uh, in uh, videotape. Uh, what does it mean? It's really a very simple ceremony, Sam. The Navy will design this uh, so it will not be a military ceremony. Uh, the family gets to select uh, a very brief music and the words that they would like to say. Uh, the Navy is going to have two chaplains there, and there will be a Catholic priest there as well, uh, selected by the Kennedy family. Uh, and then the remains will be sent to, uh, to the ocean. And we don't know exactly where this would be as far as the exact location? They are going to uh, make it very difficult to follow this ship. Uh, uh, it will be in very deep water uh, to make uh, any recovery of anything uh, nearly impossible. Thank you very much, John McCarthy in Washington. Morton Dean is standing by now at the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport. Morton, do you see signs uh, of movement there from the standpoint of the family going to what John has described? Well, Sam, I can tell you that within the past hour, I was told that authorities here uh, in Hyannisport have been alerted to the possibility, and I emphasize that term, the possibility, that the Kennedy family will be leaving this compound here in Hyannisport and will be heading to Falmouth, another Cape Cod seaside community, to participate in a burial at sea. And once again, I will emphasize the word that that possibly will take place. And we don't know if the Kennedy family goes, how many of the family members might go? No, we haven't been told that, Sam. What is the mood there tonight, uh, Morton? Well, it's the same mood that has existed all day, and I think the best way I can describe it is to say it's been grim. I can see that etched in the face of Senator Kennedy as he prepared to board a Coast Guard helicopter earlier today, and I could certainly could see that in the face of Ethel Kennedy as she drove out of the compound at mid-afternoon in a convertible. Thanks very much, Morton Dean, and I had this point. Thank you. As long as there was no definite word about the fate of John Kennedy Jr. and the Bissett sisters, there, there were those who refused to give up hope. But today, any disbelief was changed to resignation. Here's Sylvia Chase. Woods Hole, Massachusetts. At dusk, the remains of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife Carolyn, and her sister Lauren Bassett were brought ashore, making final a reality many have found hard to accept. The bodies would be taken to a medical examiner to determine the exact cause of death before they are turned over to their families. Two divers went down at 10.30 this morning and resurfaced just after 11. During that 40-minute period of time, we were able to positively identify the three people that we were looking for. All the bodies were found in the fuselage. The scene seemed to describe the circumstances of the crash. Twisted wreckage, wires, uh, seats, uh, the kinds of things that you can imagine uh, that would be the result of a high impact uh, contact with the water. The Kennedy family awaited further discoveries, filled time. Aunt Ethel Kennedy in Hyannisport, and 116 miles to the south, Sister Caroline left her summer residence on Long Island with husband Edwin Schlossberg. And on the Senate floor, senior members, close friends, rose to pay tribute. Senator Robert Byrd. Words fail to express the special deprivation that the human spirit feels when the young, the beautiful, the handsome, the vital among us are suddenly taken from our midst before they have fulfilled their potential promise. Senator Orrin Hatch. And I will say to the senator from Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts that America mourns with you and the United States Senate mourns with you, your family and the Bassett family as well. By afternoon, Senator Kennedy, his sons Edward Jr. and Rhode Island Congressman Pat Kennedy were taken to the sea by Coast Guard helicopter and ferried to the recovery vessel. For the senator, one more trip in a long procession. For his brother Jack, then Bobby, John Jr.'s mother Jacqueline Onassis, nephew Michael Kennedy. The Bissett family remained in seclusion, but it was announced memorial services for Lauren Bissett will take place at Christ Church in Greenwich, Connecticut, Saturday evening. Private services at St. Thomas More Church in Manhattan have been set for Friday morning to memorialize Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy. It was his boyhood place of worship. 
Last rites had barely been announced when questions arose about the precedent-setting recovery of a private plane at government expense. President Clinton responded at a White House press conference this afternoon. Because the Coast Guard felt that they had the capacity to succeed in this, if they had a, couple, a few more days, and because of the the role of the Kennedy family in our national lives and because of the enormous losses that they have sustained in our lifetimes, I thought it was appropriate to give them a few more days. The president also spoke today of his friendship with John Kennedy Jr., reminiscing about the first time the man came back to visit the house where he'd lived as a toddler. And he came back to the Oval Office where he saw the desk that he took the famous picture in, you know, coming through the gate for the first time since he was a little boy. And then last May, the president said, John and his wife, Carolyn Kennedy, got a tour of the private residence. But it was a nice night. I think that he really wanted to kind of come to terms with all of it. And I think he and, he and Carolyn, they were delightful young people and they had a, a great time here that night. And Hillary and I loved having them here. But especially in light of everything that's happened, I, I'm, I'm glad he had the chance to come back here one more time. Sylvia Chase. All the latest information on the search and recovery, as well as the crash investigation, is coming through the Coast Guard Command Center in Cape Cod. Lisa Stark is standing by there to bring us up to date. Lisa, take us through the recovery of those bodies. How did it go? Well, it went actually quite smoothly, Sam, once they were able to locate the bodies. Uh, the uh, Coast Guard was asked today how the bodies were brought up. They would not say, but they said it was done in a very sensitive manner. And they've also now, Sam, brought up the main piece of fuselage, an eight to 10 foot section of the fuselage where the bodies were found. That has also been recovered and is out of the water tonight. So Lisa, that certainly means that the bodies were brought up not still in the fuselage, but then afterwards the fuselage came up. That is our understanding. Uh, their their uh, intention was always to try to get the remains out first and then to worry about getting out the wreckage. And we're also told there is still some wreckage down about 115 feet below the water, and they hope to get that wreckage out within the next two days. Now, they actually found the fuselage last night. Am I correct on that? That's right. They went down. They worked into the evening last night. It was about 11.30 last night. They found it with a remote camera, a camera on a remote vehicle, uh, from the USS Grasp, and they made a positive identification of the plane with that camera and then waited to daylight to send the divers down. It turns out they found it very close to the spot that they had postulated from all of the radar tracks that they would find it. They were amazingly accurate, Sam. Uh, they, they found it about two miles, less than two miles from the spot where they thought the plane had actually hit the water, but that is not where they thought they would find the wreckage because of currents and things like that. They actually... Uh, they actually found the wreckage about a half a mile away from where they had determined it would likely be. Can you tell us anything about the process of taking the bodies ashore for autopsy? Uh, they were brought uh, from the USS Grasp on Coast Guard vessels, brought to Wood Pole, uh, the Coast Guard station there. There were two medical uh, examiner vehicles, <clears throat> excuse me, and Senator Kennedy and his sons were also on hand. They accompanied the bodies to the medical examiner's office. So if these bodies, in fact, are buried at sea tomorrow morning, they will have done an examination to determine whether there was any medical emergency that overtook John Kennedy Jr. before the crash. Uh, um, I'm sorry, they will do autopsies on these bodies. Uh, that will tell them what they need to know, and that information will be passed to the National Transportation Safety Board. Thank you very much, Lisa Stark. Uh, thanks for your reports. When we come back, memories of a special detail guarding the president's son long ago. But stay with us. The story of the touching moments before John Jr.'s heartbreaking salute. Lynn Schur with the Secret Service agents who remember the little boy they called Lark. When 2020 continues.